I'm going to Sicily. This is my favorite place on the entire planet. I'm two and a half thousand meters above sea level on the island of Sicily. And as you can see, this is pretty cold and windy. But the Phoenicians called this place the furnace. The Romans called it the burning. And for the Arabs, it was the mountain of fire. We know it as Mount Etna. And even after thousands of years, it's still one of the most active volcanoes in the world. It may be hard to believe that volcanoes as destructive as Etna could ever develop a partnership with life. But in fact, working together, they fine-tune the Earth's temperature by controlling the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This process begins in an unlikely place. The oceans, with tiny creatures called plankton. They may be individually microscopic, but they're so abundant that when they come together, they can be seen from space. Every year, they proliferate into huge blooms that colour the ocean green. And it's because the plankton are so abundant that they can help regulate the climate of the planet. The oceans absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and the plankton use this carbon to grow. When the plankton die, they fall to the seafloor, and here, over thousands of years, they are slowly transformed into rock. In this way, huge amounts of carbon dioxide, the very gas that keeps our planet warm, are removed from the atmosphere and locked away on the seafloor. So if that was the end of the story, our planet would steadily get colder and colder. Fortunately, volcanoes like Etna don't allow that to happen. Etna is a special type of volcano. It's formed where two of the Earth's plates are colliding. In this case, the African plate with the European one. What happens is that one plate gets forced down or subducted underneath the other. That action produces volcanoes, and subduction volcanoes produce some of the largest the most powerful eruptions on the planet. Where the plates collide, the rock on the seafloor containing carbon from the dead plankton is carried deep into the earth. As it descends, this layer of rock is heated, so the rock melts, releasing carbon dioxide. And gas is returned back into the atmosphere during an eruption. The remarkable cycle is complete. It's uncanny how working together, life and volcanoes keep just the right amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, maintaining our planet at a comfortable temperature. But this process that has sustained all life on the planet comes at an enormous cost. Subduction volcanoes are the most violent on Earth. You can see just how explosive they are by looking at one of the most famous eruptions ever recorded. On May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens in the United States was ripped apart. Within minutes, 2.8 billion cubic metres of the volcano were blasted out over the surrounding countryside. 
For the last 25 years, Mount St Helens has been fairly quiet. But inside its vast crater, a giant cone of rock is growing. Forced up by the pressure from beneath, Mount St Helens is building for another eruption. The irony is that subduction volcanoes are so highly explosive and destructive because they're so gassy. Yet it's the release of the gas that's crucial to the Earth. That's the key to recycling carbon that's locked in the rocks back into the atmosphere. The whole elaborate system works like a finely tuned thermostat, maintaining the right temperatures for life. But of course, it must be hard to accept just how important volcanoes are to our world when it's your own home that gets destroyed. In 1992, a few months before I first came here, the volcano was spewing out masses of lava. And I remember the news footage of the farmer who lived in this house here. And with the lava coming up to his front door, he sits down for a farewell meal, drinks a final glass of red wine, dubs a sarcastic remark, grazie governo, on the wall, and leaves his home to the lava. Ever since a planet formed four and a half billion years ago, Earth's inner heat has been continuously struggling to escape. We see the result as volcanoes, but that's just one part of it. To me, Nothing has been more important to the history of our planet than the heat trapped inside it. No force on Earth is more dramatic, more destructive, more violent than volcanoes. But they're so much more than just a force of destruction. They're the life force of our planet. Quite simply, without volcanoes, I wouldn't be here. And neither would you.